funny and welcome to today's video and welcome to another wwe reaction this video was recommended by little man 27 and he said you should react to edge's career story since edge is now in aew i am so excited to learn more his name is not edge it's his real name right now that he uses but back in the day when he was edge in wwe i only knew that he was really hated like he's one of the biggest villains out there but somehow now with his reformed not reformed but like different presentation of his image i feel like he turned from a heel to a baby face however i am not really sure about that i just need to watch more about his story in AEW. but it just started since he just entered it so yeah in the meantime i want to learn about his past and see where he comes from how he started and everything in between i did find the video that little man was recommending and it is made by wrestler with andy i love 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 this channel he really simplifies things for people who are newcomers like me into wwe and pro wrestling and he really knows how to make the timeline and everything so simple but at the same time very educational so make sure to go and check out the channel itself and if you want to check out my reaction continue watching also i do upload on my patreon patreon.com star support bunny these are videos that are usually copyrighted on youtube or blocked and i cannot upload them here a lot of these videos are actually recommended by you so i do shout you out at the start of the video there as well all right let's go and react to this video shall we <laughs> with generation z now coming of age there's been a lot of nostalgia for the ruthless aggression era as of late this period Woo. of course was the point when stars like john cena brock lesnar randy orton and dave batista all came to the forefront love, love, of the love, wwe love however Perhaps none of them were more beloved by fans than Edge. Beloved? The rated R superstar initially got his break as a tag team performer during the Attitude Era a few years previous to this, but it was in the mid 2000s that saw him really break out into the singles division, mm -hmm. turning himself into a legend in the process. However, sometimes some wrestlers profit from being uh, with a team because them alone cannot carry the weight. So when they share it with others, um, it is better and they can make it more significant. However, with Edge, like he belongs as a superstar all by himself. He would carry a whole team on his shoulders like he does not need anyone. His career hasn't all been so straightforward with the rated R superstar having his fair <laughs> share of ups and downs throughout his run. From his real life love affair with Lita to his oh, career no. threatening injury before finally oh, no. making his glorious return to the ring after almost a decade away from Whoa. the business. So how did all this come to be? Ten well, years. Join us today as we take a deep dive into his fascinating entire career journey so far. He looks so cool far, with the long hair, but I like the short one now. The edge story. You think you know me. Adam Joseph Copeland was born in Orangeville, Ontario, Canada on October 30th, 1973, and would not go on to become the lead guitarist of U2, but would instead follow an entirely different career path, <laughs> one that began with him developing an early interest yeah. in the world of pro wrestling, particularly WWE, <laughs> where his favorite performers included the likes of Mr. Perfect, Macho Man Randy Savage, and most of all, Hulk Hogan. And he wasn't alone in this passion. Brother? At the age of 10, he met Jason Riso, with the two soon becoming close oh, friends okay. soon after, bonding over their shared love of all things WWE. Nice. At 16, they went to see WrestleMania 6 in the Toronto Sky Dome and watched as the Ultimate Warrior pinned the Hulkster to become the WWE Champion. It was that night, seeing the spectacle in person, that Adam realized he wanted to become a pro wrestler himself. Nice. A year later, and he had started training with Sweet Daddy Silky and Ron Hutchinson in Toronto all while working part-time jobs at the same time to help pay the Dude, bills. Dude, that's so hard. This hard work but you have the energy when you're younger. Them, because by 1992, he was ready to make his in-ring debut and would initially work around the local Ontario circuit under the name of Sexton Hardcastle. Before long, Sexton he would be joined by Our his childhood Castle? friend Jason as well, who was now going by the ring name of Christian Cage. Oh, okay. A team in those early days, that's the two Christian. became known as Hard Impact. And then Dude, I didn't even know that was Christian Cage. What? That's how long their friendship has been? Brother. Later, the Suicide Blondes. And with their natural talent, it didn't take long before Bret Hart's business manager, Carl DeMarco, took notice of them while performing at a show in Ajax, Ontario, and asked them to send in audition tapes to the WWE. They didn't hear anything back at the time, but DeMarco himself would find himself as the president of WWE Canada a couple of years later, 
and this would be enough to get the Toronto natives a foot in the door at last. No. It was Copeland who got in first, taking on Bob Holly in his debut at a live event on May 10th, 1996. But at the back same in the time day, as he was doing this, he also continued his training, now under the tutelage of Bret Hart back up in Calgary. Come June 22nd, 1998, and he was ready to make his television debut when he appeared on that night's episode of Raw as Edge, a mysterious nice. character who would enter the arena through the crowd. Oh, that's so cool. Quickly, he began impressing audiences with standout performances against the likes of Mark <sighs> Merrow and Owen Hart, and it wouldn't be long before he found himself in a feud with Gangrel, something which also served as the main roster introduction of Christian, who was then being portrayed as Edge's brother, turned against him oh. by the wrestling vampire. Uh, together, Gangrel and Christian would eventually convince Edge to join them, and together, the three of them would form The Brood, a unit most memorable okay. for having one of the best theme songs in WWE history. Which was what, but of what course, the they were much more than a theme song, and they proved hey, this by going on a series of wins song. in late 1998 and early 1999. Copyright, right? After establishing themselves, Edge and Christian then moved Why on to a program so with red? fellow High Flyers, what, the is Hardy that Boys. Paint? The four having the first in what would go on to become a series of classic pay-per-view encounters at the June 27th, 1999 King of the Ring. While the Canadians would be on the losing end that night, Edge quickly bounced back by finding success in the singles division, beating Jeff nice. Jarrett at a house show in Toronto on July 24th to become the Intercontinental Champion for the first time. Sure, it would only end up being a one-night reign by the end of things, as he lost it back the next no night. No way! One but even night. This was enough to prove that management. Like it is so sad. You celebrate a victory for like not even twenty-four hours, and then you lose it. Why even? You know, like that is such a short happiness. I mean, I'm not gonna complain about short happiness. I eat chocolate, and that is the shortest type of happiness you can get in your life. But still, had big plans for him. In these days, the Intercontinental title still held some of its past prestige and was largely seen as a belt for up-and-comers on their way towards the main event picture. Why is he showing and The Edge Rock as an up-and-comer? With future single was star an being written then? all over his In face. the 90s, right? Still, for the time being, he would primarily oh, remain shirt. a tag team wrestler, teaming with Christian as oh. they once again came face to face with their chief rivals, the Hardy Boys, Christian at October 17, so 1999's guys. No Mercy. By then, Edge and Christian oh. had been given the boot by Gangrel, and he had gone on to replace his former protégés with the Hardys themselves, labeling themselves as the new brood. This story oh. led to the first ever tag team ladder match at the aforementioned pay-per-view. First tag match team match? A match that would set the template for what the tag ladder team match. division would become over the next few years. Nice. High flying, Ooh. high risk, and unlike anything oh else Oh my god, did now, you see that? We've done biographies of both Matt and Jeff Hardy elsewhere on this channel, so we've covered this period in some detail, but for those who haven't okay. seen those videos yet, the bullet points are basically that these four men changed the game with that initial ladder match, opening up the eyes of fans everywhere. Nice. Following that, they would also add a third team into the mix in the form of the Dudley Boys, and at the WrestleMania Dudley 2000, Boy. they would all take part in the triangle ladder match, the match that would serve as a precursor for the now iconic tables, ladders, and chairs. Both TLC1 and TLC2, happening at SummerSlam 2000 and WrestleMania 17 respectively, still hold up to this day as two my of the God, greatest oh my God, what's going on? ever put on, with all six men He's giving hanging. audiences something so spectacular that it turned oh. them into stars overnight. We seriously oh my can't sell God. these matches enough, so if you haven't seen he them, go back and do so right now, particularly TLC2, because it might still be the best ladder match ever, even now in 2021. It was during this time that everything also began to click with Edge and Christian's like on-screen characters now. too, as they developed a goofy comedy duo reminiscent of Bill and Ted. They were frequently- Dude, no, I don't see, like, probably, yeah, I mean, when they were younger as a comedy duo, true, true, true. When they were younger, goofiness and whatnot, and they have already the friendship and they look so similar, uh, like beefs and buttheads a bit. <laughs> but now, like, I could not see that at all. Now they're so- manly and feisty like they need to go with the more serious attitude able to entertain with both their backstage segments and in ring and they're good and actors they i love that heels at the time it became increasingly it's hard not to love them as time went on seriously how can you hate someone who comes out to a rabid texas like crowd this. with giant matching like foam this. cowboy hats on exactly. and offers those with the benefit of flash photography <laughs> a five second pose so they can all take photos yeah but this wasn't to say they were just That's a comedy funny. act 
No, they continue to prove that they yeah. were legitimate contenders by beating almost everyone that was thrown in their path. That's good. In fact, they would end up winning all of those initial TLC matches and would become WWE Tag Team Champions on no less than six separate occasions between 1999 and 2001. Having thoroughly conquered the tag team division then, it was inevitable that singles pushes would begin for both Edge and Christian sooner or later, and this began to take form when the former won the 2001 King of the Ring tournament, King the same Edge. tournament that had rocketed the likes of Steve Austin, Triple H, and Kurt Angle to stardom in years prior. This nice. victory formally turned Edge babyface and led his kayfabe brother to attack him out of jealousy, oh. sparking a feud between the two in mid-2001 that ended up centering around the Intercontinental title. Ooh. Here, both men took it to the next level, oh, proving no. they had what it took to stand on their own. Oh but my God. this was perhaps more apparent with Edge at the time, who WWE clearly saw as a main event level performer in waiting. Yep. Yep. And with his popularity ever growing, he continued to put on star making performances throughout the remainder of 2001 and beginning of 2002 against wrestlers like William Regal, Mr. Perfect, and Booker T. Though it wasn't until April of the latter year that he began the program, which firmly solidified him as an impact player, battling and eventually beating Kurt Angle in a hair versus hair match at May 19th's Judgment Day. Oh my Day God! So if he Perhaps would lose that one, he would lose his hair. Was that what is supposed to happen? Because Edge without that hair in WWE as Edge would not be the same. No, now, now it's a different story. But back in the day, his best singles match overall up until that point. After this, he got a chance to team up with his childhood Aww, hero Hulk Hogan as the two went on success. to briefly win tag team gold together in the summer. Man, this yes, makes him everything so was happy. looking up for the boy from Ontario, and he was by that point becoming one of the undisputed stars of the SmackDown brand. Unfortunately, this momentum would be halted temporarily when he suffered a neck injury in oh September no. of 2002, yeah, I heard about this. something which eventually worsened to the point that by February of the following year, he would be forced to undergo surgery, taking him out of action oh no. for over a year. Oh when he no. returned on March 22, 2004, Edge was moved over to the Raw brand where he quickly set about re-establishing himself and making up for lost time by winning the World Tag Team titles with Chris Benoit, oh, okay. and then later okay. wrestling the Intercontinental belt away from Randy Orton. After being stripped of the IC belt following a minor injury soon after that, he decided he was done waiting for an opportunity and set his sights on the top prize instead. He subsequently turned on Chris Benoit in November of 2004, oh. and from there on in, adopted a far more aggressive and brash heel character who felt he deserved to be the top dog above all else. And this certainly worked wonders for him as he got a number of title shots following this. However, no matter how hard he tried, he still couldn't win the big one. For some, this would have crushed their confidence, but for Edge, it only drove him to push himself harder. At WrestleMania 21 on April 3rd, 2005, he won the first ever Money in the Bank ladder match, earning himself a title shot at any time of his choosing in the course of the next nah, year. Who, what As this was the do? first time this gimmick had been tried out, fans weren't quite sure what to expect yet, and so for months following this win, Edge would casually tease that he was going to cash in, but would never do so. Instead, mm. finding himself the focus of a real-life love triangle as uh -oh. details of his affair with Lita came to light. Uh -oh. Yes, Lita, who had been in an off-screen relationship with Matt Hardy for some time, took to traveling with Edge when Matt got injured. Oh man, and Lita, so that is happens, not nice! Over time, sparks began to fly between them, that and is not, that is falling for each other. Uh-uh! Uh-uh, that is not nice, Lita! That is a mean, mean move! Mm, first end the relationship, then start a new one. There is no need to do this. So everybody gets hurt, and nobody trusts anyone anymore. Each other. When Hardy later discovered the truth about this, he furiously went public with the information. Something yeah. which led to him getting fired from the company as fans directed their anger over this at both Edge and Lita. WWE saw this not as a negative Why though. Why did he get they fired? They believe the heel heat that Edge was drawing was enough to Wait, finally- Wait, first he gets cheated on and then he gets fired? What was he supposed to like? Sit silently and applaud? Take popcorn and watch? Push him up to the level Explain of Explain this star. to me, guys. And in their defense, they were right. Because soon after this, he and Lita became an on-screen item too. This new union proving to be the final I mean, missing piece of the puzzle as together, together they okay, became like... the most hated duo in the <gasps> industry. They hate Initially them. Initially in storyline, Edge like, and Lita yeah, the found villain. themselves feuding with Kane, who was then being used as the on-screen surrogate for Matt Hardy. Oh. However, when Hardy returned to the company on the July 11th, 2005 oh, episode back. of Raw, the program pivoted, and the two former friends began battling it out numerous <gasps> times over the next couple of months 
with the whole thing eventually culminating in a Loser Leaves Town ladder match on the October 3rd episode of Raw, that Lita which holding Edge it? ended up winning. From there, he would begin referring oh, to himself man. as the Rated R Superstar, too hot for TV to handle, and he would start a feud with Ric Flair, the two eventually so settling things in a match at January 2006's New Year's Revolution. Edge lost that match, but he still had an Ooh. ace up his sleeve, as it turned out later on in the night. After John Cena had barely survived a hellish Elimination Chamber match with his WWE title on the line, Vince McMahon appeared at the top of the stage and announced to a stunned audience that the Rated R Superstar was cashing in his Money in the Bank contract right then and there. Wow. All right, man, his storyline is good. The they did some good there. He and Lita celebrated his victory with a highly controversial celebration, which certainly lived up to his moniker of Rated R Superstar. And after that, he continued his feud with Cena, eventually dropping the belt back to him at the Royal Rumble later that month. Aww. It in had only month. been a short reign for sure, but it was Every enough that people now him. looked at Edge in a whole new light. Okay. From there, he was a force to be reckoned with, the All ultimate right. opportunist. And at WrestleMania 22, he proved he could also be one of the toughest guys on the roster when he fought Mick Foley in an incredible hardcore match, Poor which Mick ended Foley. with him spearing Mrs. Foley's baby boy through a flaming table. Oh my god, and oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, what? Following this, he teamed with Mick for a while, both having finally earned each other's respect after their brutal war together. Whoa. This period saw the two revive the How hardcore did title and proclaim themselves co champions. Later that same night, Edge would also reinsert himself into the world title picture too, when he cost John Cena a title match against Rob Van. This run would turn out to be more successful than the first as he unveiled his own custom version of the title and oh. successfully defended it against the C Nation leader a number of times over the rest of I the like summer that they can until customize eventually those. losing it at September 17th's Unforgiven pay-per-view. Oh. By now That's though, table. no one That's loss really could painful. hurt him. He was too big of a star for that and instead segued into starting a tag team with Randy with Orton Lita? named Rated RKO, as the duo vowed to take out the newly reformed D-Generation X. This battle of the old guard versus the new guard saw the Ruthless Aggression era stars come out on top. From there, their winning ways continued into 2007, Too though by then world title aspirations would eventually see them challenging uh, each other, course. as both they, still wanted to be the top dog exactly in singles competition. This is exactly what happened. Yes, a team with two egos oh as God, big as these was never him. going to be able to last to forever, face. but it didn't matter because Edge would find himself with a new family surrounding him soon enough. Before that, though, he would win the what WWE even title mean? once again. After beating Mr. Kennedy in a singles match where the Money in the Bank contract was on the line in May of 2007, he cashed in on The Undertaker just a few days later, becoming a full-time member of the SmackDown roster from there on in okay. as a result. And it was during this period that Edge effectively made SmackDown his show. With okay. the likes of Triple H and Shawn Michaels over on Raw, of course. it left the Rated R Superstar free to become the undisputed top star of his brand. Yep. And he proved this even further when he began a union with Vicky Guerrero, soon adding lackeys in the form of Zack Ryder, Kurt Hawkins, and Chavo Guerrero to the group and naming it La Familia. Da With La Familia. Familia surrounding him, Edge would be able to fend off challengers in the form of Batista, Rey Mysterio, and The Undertaker throughout the end of 2007 and beginning of 2008. Oh. And it would be at WrestleMania 24 God, on March 30th, so 2008, where the latter gave Edge the biggest moment of his career up until that point, as he not only main evented the biggest show of the year as the defending world champion, but also took on the dead man's undefeated streak while he was at it. Of course, Edge okay. wouldn't end the streak that night, but his match with Taker was very well received and helped to spark a series of stellar WrestleMania performances from the Phenom in the years that followed. Right. It wasn't like Edge had to live without his precious world title for long. Over the next few months, Vicky Guerrero, who was by then the general manager of SmackDown, helped her kayfabe lover get a number of shots at his lost Bro, gold again until no he way eventually he's marrying won it back her. at June 1st's One Night Stand. When he lost it again soon after this, though, it created a rift within La Familia, oh. one which eventually climaxed in Edge getting caught having an affair with Alicia Fox. Oh, yeah, Fox, I think I remember this. to Vicky this. dumping yep, yep. him and vowing to make his life a living hell in the months that followed. <laughs> I mean, yes, come on. Edge Vicky, would what did you his expect? At first, but over the next couple of years, he was able to overcome them as he won the world title three more times. Still, he wasn't satisfied with just this. He wanted more. Okay. And after briefly being moved over to Raw in 2010, he returned to SmackDown looking for his sixth reign, a reign that would eventually begin when he won a TLC match against Kane, Rey Mysterio, and Alberto Del Rio at December 19th's titular pay-per-view. 
By this point, with his WWE and world title reigns combined, the Rated R Superstar was an 11-time champion overall. Whoa. And as he headed into 2011, the future looked bright. Little did he know, however, that What's the years happened? of punishment he had inflicted on his body were finally oh, catching no. up to him. And so it came to pass that after defending the world title against Alberto Del Rio at WrestleMania, he appeared on the April 11th episode of Raw to announce to the world that he was being forced to retire. Oh, to no, say the news came so as a shock sad. was an understatement. Yeah. It was just so sudden, but it seemed like, unbeknownst to him, Edge had been suffering from cervical spinal stenosis. What and upon that? discovering this, doctors had refused to clear him for in-ring competition again. For oh, a man no. who felt like he was right in the prime of his career, the news yeah. came as a gut punch to him, and fans certainly felt the same way, with many of them openly crying as he announced his True. permanent exit from the ring. Now a former wrestler, Adam Copeland, had to figure out something else to do with his life. Good look sure, at him. He would make the occasional appearance for WWE in a non-wrestling role. Oh my God! But for the, the most short part, that here. life wasn't going to be feasible for him anymore. Luckily, then he was able to move on to acting, taking on a number of TV and film roles over the next nine years. I have to watch that. 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 For years, it was considered one hundred percent. No, 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 no! This is two Edge years ago. Never return to the ring. This was until the 2020 Royal Rumble where to the shock and delight of fans everywhere, he made a surprise return, later announcing that he had finally been cleared to perform again and would be returning to the company for the long term. Yes, no, just like Daniel Bryan, it's it not. seemed that the His years off had allowed now. Edge's body to repair a lot of the damage done, and for a man who was now 46 years old, he looked to be in incredible shape, he arguably is. better than he had been when he left almost a decade prior. Yeah. Following his Royal Rumble return, That's crazy, he set right? about reigniting his old feud now. with Randy Orton, something that was supposed to lead up to an epic encounter at WrestleMania 36, Edge's <laughs> first singles match since 2011. Ah, Sadly though, just a few weeks before the event, the world went into shutdown and Edge's big return match oh, instead yeah. took place in front of an empty arena. Oh, that something is so which sad. Much of the atmosphere from it and left it feeling lacking. Yeah, Still, no, let this nothing stop without the audience. the Viper in a return match at June 14th's Backlash this time using cinematic techniques such as canned audio and alternative camera angles to heighten the action. It okay, definitely no. helped and proved that even after okay. all these years and a few extra it's great hairs, compared Edge to was still as good as he had ever been. Real life audience. Unfortunately, this match was also the one in which he picked up a tricep injury that put him out of action no. for the rest of the year. He would be oh ready to return God. by the 2021 Royal Rumble, however, and it was there that, a full year after his initial comeback, he went coast to coast entering at number one and going on to win the whole thing in the end. His body. Following this, there has been much speculation oh about whether Edge will face Drew McIntyre or Roman Reigns at WrestleMania 37. It seems more likely it'll be the former at the moment, but regardless of who it ends up being, with this show being the first to feature fans in attendance in over a year, it'll finally give Edge a chance to have that big True. singles match in front of an True. audience again. True. And Nothing without the audience. Believed, may even see him becoming the WWE Champion one more time. Oh yeah. Will it happen? We'll have to wait and see, but one thing is for certain. Edge is back and better Yay! than ever. He's older, Woo! wiser, and all that more dangerous for it. <laughs> so whoever he faces better watch their back, because if history is anything uh, to go by, WWE the ultimate wrestlers don't have to worry about the him anymore. to take them out and take their gold home with him. And we, How for did one, they allow to wouldn't lose want him, it though? any That's other crazy. way. Well, guys, what did you like, think of the video? Let what him... was going on in WWE to actually let him go and be in AEW? Like, guys. Well, one thing I did learn about this video is that Edge needs to learn how to warm up before a match. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. It is really sad that he has been injured so many times. Like, he challenges himself, he pushes himself beyond limits, and then he injures himself, and then here we go again, one year without seeing him. I think he really forces it. Like, he really goes all in, which is a sign of someone who is a perfectionist, uh, a real performer, a really talented person who really wants to show all the love towards their craft. Uh, there are people who just don't want to injure themselves and they are holding back, but that does show, you know, when they are holding back. But also, in a way, it's a smarter kind of decision because they can still perform, it's still watchable, it's still good, it's not epic like the one Edge would perform, but at the same time, they are careful to not end up one year without work because a lot of money wasted, like... 
that's a big problem but yeah either way at the story i need a bit more details i need a bit more to learn a bit more about like the timeline and everything it is long it there was so many things going on one thing i learned he has been winning over and over again and his friendship with christian cage of course off screen probably was like really good but on screen was on and off since wwe which i was a bit surprised because i thought they were always friends in wwe and now in aew they turned against each other for the first time and that's why when i reacted to it i was like oh my god friends turned into enemies but i guess that was a storyline before and things turned out good and now i don't know if we are repeating the same storyline i don't know what's going on let me know in the comment down below thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed this video if you did make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more and turn notification bell so you don't miss an upload have a wonderful day i love your faces and see you tomorrow with a brand new video bye cheers